it's time to have a serious talk about sleep. What is sleep? Our brain systems need time offline to move our short-term memories into long-term storage, to repair ourselves, to build connections, as well as our bodies need that time off to build muscle. Neuron and muscle growth happen, really, in our sleep. It also helps us balance our hormones, which help us regulate our moods, our emotions, and a lot of other health-related things. Sleep is really important. So our brain can be kind of online and offline. Online is awake and offline is asleep. But what's fascinating is, is that we've learned recently that parts of our brain can be online while other parts are offline. This is called local sleep. So if you don't get enough sleep, what happens is those parts of your brain that still need those functions, they shut down. And so literally, you're nowhere near as effective without enough sleep as you are with a truly restorative sleep, which means good quality and quantity. So what happens when you look at the brain scan of a person without enough sleep is parts of their brain shut down. Again, local sleep, and they inhibit your overall cognitive function. There's also the reverse of this. Sometimes when we're asleep and our brain is offline, parts of our brain can be online. This we know about from like sleepwalking or something like that. That's called parasomnia. But it's fascinating that our brain can be online or offline, and even if we have some of these sleep challenges, parts can be doing one and parts doing the other. So how much sleep do we need, and what happens if we don't get enough? The research points to all of us really need about seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Now, if you ask around, a lot of people will tell you, huh, I can get away with a lot less than seven hours a night. But the truth is, they can't. Only about 3% of the population can truly function effectively on less than seven hours of sleep. Teens are especially sleep needy and sleep sensitive. There's a lot of neural development happening in our brains and teenagers desperately need that time for that neural development to happen. The impacts when we don't get enough sleep are huge. Some of them are like cognitive impairment. There's a significant slowing of our reaction times, especially things in areas like executive functioning, which is like planning ahead and organization, but also in areas like learning new information and a big challenge around memory. So cramming the night before can really affect you on the day of the test because your memory is affected by not getting enough sleep and you can't remember as much of that stuff. It also negatively affects our physical, our mental, and our metabolic health. Not getting enough sleep can cause us to have a bad mood or be irritable, but also affect our digestion and just a whole host of things. Sleep is important. Alarming facts show that less than half of all children in the United States obtain sufficient high quality sleep. And over 70% of high school students are not getting enough sleep. Across our lifespan, but especially during youth development, restorative, that's again, sufficient and high quality sleep, play a fundamental role in the cognitive health and our development. Higher level processes such as decision making, managing emotions, self-control are all particularly affected by sleep issues, especially in adolescence. Physical, mental, and emotional effects can really spiral from not enough sleep. So that brings us to the next question. How do we get more of it? Honestly, here's where it's not an exact science. Think a little bit about like a meteorologist or a weather forecaster. They can say the conditions are right for a storm or rain or snow, but they can't guarantee it's going to happen. When it comes to sleep, you're the meteorologist. You can say the conditions are right, but one of the nice things is you can kind of set those conditions. But it doesn't guarantee that there's going to be a great night's sleep. 
And some strategies work better for some than others. There's no really blanket answers. We gotta work and figure out what works for us. But here are a few of the conditions you might wanna consider because they've been helpful to many. Let's start with some unhelpful conditions. First off, you wanna avoid heavy foods, especially late at night. You wanna eat a little bit lighter and you wanna eat a little bit earlier to help you sleep. You definitely wanna avoid caffeine. That can definitely stimulate us to not sleep and disrupt our normal process. Light is actually really interesting. So many of you probably remember from biology that in your eyes there are cells called rods and cones. But there's also another kind of cell in your eye that is very light sensitive. And when light hits that cell, it tells us, wake up, it's time to go. So we want to avoid bright lights, especially late at night. You also wanna avoid anything that's gonna be significantly stressful, upsetting or triggering or activating. So avoid doom scrolling or big fights late at night or deep discussions with somebody right before you go to sleep. If it requires digesting or triggers your emotions, it's probably something to avoid near bedtime. So let's talk now about some helpful conditions, things that actually make it more likely for you to have a good night's sleep. So some things you might think about. Number one is schedule. Get your sleep on a schedule. Try to get a consistent going to bed time and, go, and getting up time. Our body really works well with a schedule and it helps if we keep to that schedule. Also, think about maybe some light exercise, maybe in the evening, like an evening walk. You'd like to have your room dark and cool, but actually warm feet seems to help people fall asleep. Reading is a great activity to do as part of your routine as you get ready to go to bed. And it's generally better to do it on some kind of paper, like a book or a paperback. Boundaries are also really important when you talk about sleep. You know, creating a time that you're not gonna do this or you're not gonna do that, and that you're gonna focus on winding down. Another little strategy that might help is a notepad next to your bed, so that when you have thoughts that you're trying to remember that are keeping you awake, you can write those down and let them go so you can go to sleep. Routines can be really helpful to help you set the right conditions. You can build all these pieces into a routine and can help you sleep, which is important. One more note, it's often much easier to fall asleep when you are younger. So good habits now, if you build those routines, you build that, those sets of conditions, those good habits can really help you with sleep throughout your life when it may be harder to fall asleep.